Hey, what's up guys, welcome to our channel reviews. So today I'm gonna to be reviewing one of my lenses. It's the Sony APS-C 35 millimeter prime lens. It is a f1.8 aperture lens, which I think is amazing. The thing that stood out to me in this is actually the size and the price that you can buy this at. Cause as you can see here, it's tiny, it's very lightweight and it's got such power in it. So I'm gonna give you an overview of the capabilities of this. I'm gonna cover various different categories of all the photos and videos I've taken on this as well. And just to give you an overall review of how this performs, in case you're looking at buying this as well and uh, trying to figure out if this is perfect for your Sony E-mount cameras. So let's just get straight into it. Now just covering off a few of the specs, it does come with optical steady shot image stabilization. Now what that means is if you are going to take photography of moving subjects, then it will capture the perfect moment and give you a very clear picture. So regardless of the speed that something is going at, you can get really good quality pictures just from this tiny lens here. Now this is a prime lens, it's not a zoom lens. Now I know that with zoom lenses, there can be some interference with some of the motors in there. When you are zooming in and out, you don't get super clear pictures like you do with prime lenses. Now having said that, the motor controls on this prime lens are super quiet, they're so smooth, and they're completely unobtrusive when you're taking both photos and videos, and I'll be showing you sample clips of that very shortly. Now, the main thing that obviously stood out is the amazing aperture size that it's got on this, which is 1.8. So this will cover you very well in all different types of lighting conditions. Now, if you are taking pictures at nighttime or doing a bit of street photography at nighttime, then 1.8 aperture is perfect and you're gonna be capturing a lot of clarity in your photos. And again, I will be showing you those clips in a bit. Now, the one thing that stands out with this lens the first time you look at it is obviously the size. Now, this is very tiny and it's very lightweight and it has an external aluminium trim. So it's not cheap plastic and it is quite solid, it's durable. And likewise, it has a very simple optical design which makes it very resistant to flares and ghosts. And also, in terms of the autofocus, if it can't lock on your subject, then you can take control using direct manual focus, which is the DMF feature on this as well. The last thing I wanted to mention about this is that it's an amazing 259 pounds. That is very cheap for a lens with this capability, especially with that aperture size on there. So I'll have a link in the description of where you can purchase this on Amazon. It's currently on sale down from over 300 pounds. So lenses nowadays, as you've seen, you've probably come across ones that are thousands and thousands of pounds. So the power that comes in this tiny little lightweight Sony lens is gonna be amazing, you're gonna love the clips. So let's just get straight into reviewing those. All right guys, so just starting off with some photos that I've taken around my town and I've taken photos of just generally the area of my friend Stephanie, who's politely accepted to model for some of my pictures and also of some buildings in different lighting conditions as well. So starting off on auto mode, I haven't made any manual adjustments to the camera settings. So as you can see on this first picture here, these are some flowers and some plants that I've seen in my local area. I wanted to give you an overview of just general street photography. So this is one sample here. And as you can see, it's very clear, it's sharp, it's crisp. I can see all of the natural colors of the flowers as well. So it's done a great job there. Moving on to the next picture, this is my friend Stephanie, and I've asked her to uh, take a seat on the bench here, just to probably around maybe four meters away, just to see how the photo comes out. And obviously it's very clear. It's not a portrait picture because I'm not too close up in focal length, and I'm not trying to capture that very beautiful background depth of field in this type of picture. But if you are taking pictures of your friends, you can see that they come out very clear and crisp and I can see the sharpness and clarity in this. It's just amazing. Here's another one of Stephanie. She's uh, holding a tree there and I've actually added all of the EXIF data along the bottoms. So if you wanna see any of the metadata from the photos that I've taken to see what aperture they've been shot at or even the ISO and the exposure levels, then you can just see that at the bottom of the screens. But as you can see here, again, very clear. It has captured the subjects on the front, i.e. Stephanie and this uh, tree stump. As you can see, the slight blur in the backgrounds is doing a great job just to show you the distance and the focal length of this shot. Again, this was probably around maybe four meters away, so not too close and not too far. And here's one of a uh, street lamp just to show you of general street photography, how that comes out. Again, here's one of a more of a longer distance view. So of the uh, landscape here, I just wanted to give a shot of the entire park. You can see that everything in this picture is basically sharp and on point. 
So there's nothing that's very blurry in here. It's captured everything and it just makes it so realistic and so clear that the pictures, the color vibrancy on this, it just looks great. Now moving on to slightly darker situations. So we are now hitting a sunset type vibe and the uh, building here, as you can see, is lit up with a very bright light there on the wall. But likewise, I can see that it's crisp. Now, as you can see here on the left hand side of the picture, you can see that it's a bit darker because the light has not really reflected onto that side and it is getting close to nighttime. And in the distance down at the end of the passageway there, you can see there's a person walking. Now again, that person is not very clear because the focus has been put on towards where the light is and the building itself. So generally, this has done a great job. It's captured it at 2.0 aperture. So that's done a great adjustment on that. Again, it is now completely nighttime. This is the courtyard of uh, one of the apartment buildings where I live. And I can just see all of the clarity in the lighting, the shadows, everything is just looking amazing here and it's not very washed out in darkness in any way and in terms of realistic point of views I can see that this does match closely to how it looked on the day and finally this is a picture at night time now the sky is a lot darker than that blue you're seeing there but it's definitely increased the ISO to make sure it captures a lot of the building which was actually very dark to see so it has adjusted it and obviously it's a little bit grainy it's not the sharpest image but it was very low in lighting and it did look different to this, but this picture actually makes it a bit brighter and gives you visibility of what the building looks like. So now moving on to one of my favorite subjects, which is the portrait photography. So I've taken a lot of pictures of Stephanie as well, but I've also taken close up macro shots of maybe flowers and various different objects, which I'll show you in a second. So this first picture, Stephanie is here and you can see that there's a nice depth of field there in the background. It's not super blurry, but again, this uh, lens does not have any focus or depth of field scales that you can manually adjust. So you'd have to change that by the distance of the focal length on your camera and your subject. Here is a much closer portrait picture of Stephanie. And as you can see, there is a great depth of field here. You can see the blur in the background and Stephanie's come out very clear and sharp in this image. Even if you're looking at the strands of hair, they've actually come up very well. Even the ones that are floating out to the sides, they're very in focus and I cannot fault this camera whatsoever. For portrait photography, I think it's done a great job. Even when I'm getting very close, possibly about 30 centimeters away from a subject. So for example, this little plant here that I've tried to do macro photography with, it's done a very good job trying to focus itself. Anything closer than this, it will get blurry and it wouldn't be able to focus. But this type of uh, lens doing macro photography at this distance, I think it's done a great job. You may need to just move the camera slightly backwards and forwards to automatically capture the focus. Or if you are really feeling up to it, then you can manually focus and try to capture the perfect sharpness on the macro subjects. Likewise, here's another example with a flower. So I was walking past the donut shop, I had to take a picture of these just to see what it looks like and the clarity in the donuts there on the front is very sharp. You can see almost all of the ingredients that's on top of this delicious looking donut right there and you can see the donuts that are right at the back, they are starting to fade in terms of the blurriness. So that depth of field there is capturing the focus on the immediate subjects in the center focal point of the pictures. So it's done a great job picking that out. And here's a few more samples of portrait photography at slightly different lengths in terms of where I was standing. And as you can see, the distance in the background, it's done a great job both blurring that and obviously capturing the lights that are coming from the wall as well and highlighting Stephanie on these pictures as very clear, sharp and in focus. And what I like about these pictures as well specifically is that in no situations are there any dark areas or shadows that I've captured on Stephanie's body and it's just so clear and everything just comes out perfect for professional photography. Again, capturing the lighting in the background, you can see the aperture has dropped to 2.0 on this one and the blurriness is smooth, it's clear and Stephanie in the subject there has just been picked out by the lens and even the fence on the right hand side there in black has been blurred because the focus has been put on Stephanie as the subject. So that portrait picture has just come out brilliantly.
Okay, so one thing I really wanted to test was the optical steady shot image stabilization feature that comes on this lens. And what better place to do this than in the gym when there's a class running with a lot of movements from the people in the class. So here's some sample shots I've taken of my class that I participate in on a weekly basis. And they agreed for me to take pictures of them during the session. So as you can see, people in these pictures are actively doing movements and they have not stopped whatsoever for me to take a picture. So they are mid movement. So as you can see here, this is perfectly captured. You can see the nice depth of field blurry background there, but the subject has been doing these lunges here and it's just come out so clear. There's no blurred movements in any way. This next picture again is multiple people doing the same thing and they are all moving at the exact same time. And you can see obviously the people at the front the camera has been able to capture them and not really made any blurry movements in their bodies and pretty much it has come out very clear. This is one of my favorite ones. These two were in a mid high five. Now this was taken in a darker studio where they're currently standing, which is why they are slightly darker. But as you can see, the camera has stopped the midway in the high five and you can see the camera hasn't blurred their hands in any way and it's just captured it perfectly. So this was a great example of how fast movement can be captured with the steady shot stabilization. However, this next one was the ultimate test. So there were people jumping in this class and during the jumps with the barbells midway, I wanted to capture them all basically in the air, which I've managed to do. As you can see here, all of them have jumped and there's not any blurriness. And I can possibly see in the last picture there, the third one, where you can see a bit of the blurriness on the hair being swung, but obviously that might be due to the lighting condition behind the person and the camera trying to focus the subject on stabilizing the body. So overall, I just think that's done a great job stabilizing this in absolute fast movements. And one final example of this is a muscle up on the bar. So from lower down to higher up, this is one smooth movement. I've captured both images quickly. I didn't do a multi burst shot. These were singular shots done differently on separate reps of this movement. And as you can see, they've come up perfect and the apertures have adjusted to 1.8, which is the maximum that this lens goes to. And that has been a brilliant shot for these people in the class. Now, one other thing I really wanted to showcase on this lens is the color vibrancy. So not only does it take great pictures, especially when you're out and about taking pictures of landscapes, of architecture and all different types of colorful things, but I wanted to showcase like when you're taking pictures of flowers and other very colorful objects, the vibrancy that you get from them is actually more realistic than anything else that I've seen in some of my other lenses. So as you can see, here's some flowers. I can pretty much give you a 95% match of how this looked in real life. I think it's so close to what it was and it doesn't really grain out any of the lighting on the actual flowers or plants or anything like that. The purple in this one is, is pretty much spot on. Now I went into this uh, donut shop, which I showed you earlier, and they had some neon lights there on the wall. So this was very difficult to try and capture a solid full view of how it looks because the wall behind it is actually pink, but with the neon lights and the camera adjusting, you can see that it had to move the aperture up to eight, which is very, very small aperture there to capture these neon lights. And it's done an excellent job giving you the colors coming out, although it didn't show you the pink wall behind the neon lights. That is because it has focused directly on those bright lights coming from that wall. Again, here's one of my friends I've asked to stand in front of those lights in uh, different positions. And as you can see, each one has generated a different level of lighting on the wall behind the, the neon lights. So overall, I think from the first picture, you can see it's slightly darker. It's 4.5 and it has an ISO of 100. And the main thing that you can see that has generated with the different lightings on each of these pictures is the exposure. So if you have a look at the EXIF data there at the bottom, you can see the exposure levels are different in each of these. So it has automatically adjusted depending on the position of where the person was standing and the pose that they're doing because the camera is trying to focus on where to capture the best looking subject. I think it's done a great job trying to give you a variety of different situations that the camera can do and it's proof that it doesn't just stick to one thing every time in the same subject. And now going back to Stephanie, now there's a massive donut here that's a swing. You can see that the pink on this is very vibrant and there's not so much shadows coming from behind. Obviously it's more natural, it's very sharp, it's clear. And you can see with the EXIF data there, it's pretty much spot on on almost all of them apart from the ISO settings. So it's 
pretty much done a excellent job giving you the colors that you're looking for when you're taking pictures in this situation. And one final one with the neon lights again, with Stephanie standing behind those angel wings, you can see that the entire picture has come out a little bit brighter and you can see the color of the wall, the color of the neon lights and also the subject in play. And the camera is trying to make sure that everything is coming out very sharp and is displaying all of the colors that it needs to to give you the best picture possible. And finally, moving on to videos. So starting off with this one was the autofocus test. So as you can see here, I'm trying to move forward with the uh, camera to this uh, plant again, just to focus, to see how much I can get close to it. So in terms of macro shooting, I'm pretty close to it right now, maybe about five centimeters away, and you can see it's quite blurry. Moving back out about 10 centimeters, 15 centimeters, this is where it starts to become very clear. So it's done a great job in getting very close. In this situation, I'm just panning away from uh, Stephanie's head, moving back to see how quickly the autofocus adjusts itself. It took about a second or two. Panning away is very smooth to focus on the distance, but when he focuses back on an object like Stephanie's face, it was quiet, quick and clear. Again, in this one, I'm moving forwards and backwards. So getting closer to Stephanie, I just wanted to see how smooth the uh, focus remains on Stephanie's face as well, and how much of the background depth of field you can see gets blurry. So I'm stepping back, and now I'm moving back again slowly to see how quickly and how smoothly the camera adjusts, which was actually very impressive. Now in terms of the video stabilization, this lens doesn't have any inbuilt stabilization. So here's some examples of me just walking with the camera in my hand. I don't have any gimbal or tripod or anything like that. I'm just holding it and I'm walking around with it. As you can see, it's pretty shaky. And even when I'm walking behind Stephanie, I'm just trying to see if I can try to keep the camera as still as possible with Stephanie in the center of the shot. It wasn't working out great because there isn't any stabilization there. So it is pretty shaky, but I would definitely recommend a gimbal if you was going to use this for videos. And finally, some nighttime uh, video clip here off the street, just getting some traffic, just to showcase in very low lighting nighttime conditions. It does pick out the subjects very clearly and it's got very good color vibrancy as well. So I hope that review was useful for you guys. In terms of my own opinion, I think this is the best lens you can buy for Sony E-mount cameras that are made by Sony, which is less than 400 pounds. Obviously there's a lot of better lenses that cost more than a thousand pounds, up to 2000 pounds and possibly more. But for this price and for the capabilities of the pictures and videos that this can take, for most day-to-day -day use, this is going to be the perfect choice for you. I think it's an absolute bargain. Of course, there's a lot of features missing that these high-end lenses that can do, such as adjusting the depth of field or the focuses. But ignoring that, there's not so much wrong with this lens that I can really think of. And I will be using this for a lot of my videos, especially here on YouTube. So for me, it's a big win and I definitely recommend it. So if you have any other questions about this lens or its capabilities, then do drop a comment below. Otherwise, I hope you really found that useful. I will be reviewing a lot more lenses in the future for my Sony a7 III. So make sure you subscribe and you won't miss those ones. And I will catch you guys at the next one. Take care. <laughs>